Today we reach number one on our list of the shortest books of the Bible. Sometimes people write long letters to friends, though I'm afraid to say it is becoming a dying art. As the price of making telephone calls has come down out of the stratosphere, does anyone else remember waiting until after 5 p.m. to make long-distance calls when the rates went down, or after 11 p.m. when they went down even further? Picking up the phone now and calling someone just to chat has reduced the need for most personal correspondence, to say nothing of email and text messaging for more focused and rapid communication. But there was a time when people sat down nearly every day to write friends in faraway places. Sometimes they were long missives, catching friends or family up with the latest news. Other times they were just short notes, dashed off to keep communication going without much news being shared. Today's letter from the New Testament falls into this second category. A short note dashed off hurriedly with the expectation that the writer was, would see his friend soon enough that a lengthy letter would not be necessary. Which begs the question, if this is a short letter dashed off hurriedly to a friend, why is it even in the Bible? Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Saturday, February 5th, 2022. Weighing in at a mere 219 words in Greek in just 15 verses in one brief chapter, the shortest book of the Bible is 3 John. Because this letter is so short, I can read the entire thing for you here without any danger of running long. Even though there are only 219 words in Greek, though, it translates into 313 words in English. Still plenty short for me to read to you. So here is the shortest book of the Bible. The elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you, and that you may be in good health, just as it is well with your soul. I was overjoyed when some of the friends arrived and testified to your faithfulness to the truth, namely, how you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than this, to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the friends, even though they are strangers to you. They have testified to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on with a manner of, in a manner worthy of God, for they began their journey for the sake of Christ, accepting no support from non-believers. Therefore, we ought to support such people so that we may become co-workers with the truth. I've written something to the church, but Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. So if I come, I will call attention to what he is doing in spreading false charges against us. And not content with those charges, he refused to welcome the friends and even prevents those who want to do so and expels them from the church. Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but imitate what is good. Whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. Everyone has testified favorably about Demetrius, and so has the truth itself. We also testify for him, and now you know that our testimony is true. I have much to write you, but I would rather not write with pen and ink. Instead, I hope to see you soon, and we will talk together face to face. Peace to you. The friends send you their greetings. Greet the friends there, each by name. There you have it, a compliment, a warning, and words of encouragement wrapped in words spoken between true friends. Clearly, this isn't an epistle to a congregation. Wherever Gaius happened to live, it apparently did no good for John to write the church as a man named Diotrephes stood in his way. He must have been the acknowledged acknowledged leader of that unnamed congregation so that he would have had the power to receive a letter from John and then withhold it from the church. From what John says here, Diotrephes clearly didn't care for him, even spreading false rumors uh, and innuendo about him. 
By contrast, John commends Gaius for walking in the truth, which equates to walking in love, as we saw yesterday in 2 John. Maybe that's why this letter made it into the canon of Scripture. It provides us a critical insight into the actual workings of the early Christian community, which faced dissension and conflict. For it is one thing to disagree, it is quite another to slander and to take down an opponent. We can disagree about a great many things in the church and still practice love. But clearly, Diotrephes has stepped over the line, acting not out of love, but out of spite. That's no way to be the church of Jesus Christ. So there you have it. The six shortest books of the Bible. Counting down again, number six at 659 words, Titus. Number five, at 461 words, Jude. Number four, at 440 words, Obadiah. Number three, at 335 words, Philemon. Number two, at 245 words, Second John. And our number one shortest book of the Bible at a mere 219 words, Third John. And now may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.